24-7. Shay, good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. This is breaking news here on Off the Bench this morning. Tigers put another defensive tackle into the boat. Ogeron and the crew on a heater right now. Yeah, how, how did I get booked? That's what I'm wondering. I'm sandwiched <laughs> in between a, a couple of commits and an Aranda and a big ball in tomorrow. I don't yeah. Know where, I'm, a two, I'm a two-star, boys. I'm fitting in, though. The true superstar. High upside, though. A two a two star I, with a lot of you're like a Jacob Hester two star. That's oh man, big things coming then. That's fair. Uh, tell me about Jalen Lee. Oh well, good job, boys. Another good one. Um, look, LSU loves him. This is a kid, all of six three, two eighty five. Um, he can play the end spot for you in a three four. He can play inside if you need. Uh, and I really think that look, so many people talk about uh, the prospects around Louisiana and Jalen Lee. Going on and committing on uh, radio was about as public as he's ever been with this process. I mean, he's a kid. Wow. Um, him and his dad have kept things, and the coaching staff there, even Keeled. I mean, he had offers rolling in from LSU, Bama, OU, Georgia, Florida, you name it. Um, and, and he just was, you know, wasn't on Twitter all the time or any of that. Uh, and I think he sort of flew under the radar. But this is a legit four-star pickup. I think he's going to continue to move trend up in the rankings. Uh, I think he's – this is a big addition. Look, and, and as you guys have been talking, Ed Orgeron and Dennis Johnson, they came out of last cycle and they said we have to figure out a way to not only score big in the trenches but get a big class and make sure they're all quality guys. And when you pop a guy like Eric Taylor last night and you wake up today and turn around and you get Jalen Lee committed uh, and lock down one of the big you know pieces in state, regardless of position, really, Jalen Lee is. Uh, and that's a – as he, as Steve Bob said, that's a heater. They're they are on an absolute roll right now, up to twenty commits, and and I wouldn't worry too much about the number, right? People look at it and say, well, they only have five spots left. We know how recruiting works; yeah. it's a long cycle. Um, numbers always work themselves out. So uh, this is one of those things where uh, around the football ops building this morning, I definitely believe they are dancing because they got. Uh, a couple guys at the boat over the past 12 hours that they really wanted. Yeah, that's what's crazy is, Shay, just talking to people about Jalen Lee. Uh, maybe it is because of his kind of lack of a social media presence, but he's not as widely known. But when you talk to people in the know, there's like talk that maybe his rating could even go up, that like he has been very impressive. Uh, so, so, so I guess just – introduce people a bit more to Jalen Lee. What is so impressive about it? What's kind of the national recruiting take on, on what he brings to the table? A kid who's just powerful uh, off the line, but also has got a good bit of athleticism to him. I mean, this is a kid who uses his hands well. He is, he's grown his game so much over the past year from Live Oak uh, into the spring. He's put in a lot of, uh, a lot of sort of off-season grinds and uh, I know a lot of coaches who went out there in spring ball, and I'll, look, I'll give them to you, Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Florida, um, that left and said, look, this kid has moved up our board. He's an offer and take it any point he wants in. Uh, Lee and his dad and them were just on a big family vacation. They went and saw Florida, uh, stopped in and saw the Gators. So a lot of teams were fighting over him in a year where defensive line in Louisiana is deep. I mean, for them to be able to offer up four – you know, really high-level SEC-type guys uh, is a big deal. And, and as I said, when you're when you're going out of your junior year of high school and you're already 6'3", 280, 285, yeah. clean, yeah. Not, a, you know, not a big fat kid we're talking here, where Jalen Lee is in very good shape, um, well-built, big lower body. Uh, this is We're going to be talking about this ad for a while because I don't think he got enough credit, uh, or at least height, uh, as some of the other guys around Louisiana have, but uh, it's well-deserved. And I'll say this, on signing day, I think we'll look down uh, at the list of the guys they landed in-state, and I think you'll circle him uh, in that very top group of, of wow. being, you know, hey, I remember the day that he got on board. Yeah, and, and, and so it's a big year, as you said, for defensive linemen in Louisiana. Um, he's kind of the first big domino to fall. You hope that more are coming down the pipeline. Uh, but but it all it, this, this is interesting because there's always a lot of talk surrounding Dennis Johnson, right? Coach, Coach Dennis Johnson, meatball former LSU player, um, a young coach. And because maybe, you know, some of the big guys that got missed on last year, like a lot of people say, nah, you know, he's not getting done. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. What's your take on what Meatball's done from a recruiting expert's opinion? Oh, man, I, I'll, I could argue his case, so I'm blue in the face. Look, yes, he is 
he was in the 30 under 30 club, right, for a while there. I mean, yep. he's one of the youngest coaches in the country. And, and I think with that comes, you know, a bit of a – I mean, he was getting out on the road and recruiting for the first time and, and the pressure of LSU. I think he handled it well. Look, the first bid he ever got was Caleb on chase on, and that was when – uh, Orgeron put him in the outside linebacker spot. Orgeron could only have one in-home visit with Chase on, and Meatball went all the way through with him. And Caleb on said, look, I was leaning to Texas, and Meatball helped close it. And from there, I think, too, people forget, if you look at a position where you say, we didn't hit on everyone we wanted, and you're quick to blame as, as that coach was for some reason responsible, uh, I think you also look, and Meatball landed, what, Marcel Brooks, who was maybe arguably one of their top three best players last year. Yeah. He recruits Texas well. But I think he took it upon himself to say, look, last cycle, yeah, I was going after Sopcher. I don't think anyone would say that they lost Sopcher because of Dennis Johnson. Uh, and he was going after the Mississippi guys. And the Mississippi guys all ended up dragging it to the end and fighting with a bunch of teams. They come up snake guys. And what I've been impressed by is they turned around and said, okay, look, we're making these guys that we want in Louisiana priority. We're going to knock down those dominoes. We're going to do everything we can to keep them. And then we're going national for the rest of our guys. They haven't been messing around a lot in Mississippi this cycle. We've seen him go to the East Coast. We've seen him go to different little pockets of the country. We've seen uh, him be present in Georgia. So I like what he's done so far. And for them, again, like I said, if you're going to circle and say defensive linemen and make them a priority, he worked Jalen Lee hard. They get him in the boat. Patrick Jenkins comes to camp. They get him in the boat. And now you're sitting there looking at Jacoby and Guillory out of Ash and Jaquel and Roy out of U High. Two guys that Ed Orgeron and Dennis Johnson have been on nonstop. I mean, we see Jaquel and Roy tweeting out. He's there every day. Every day. He goes to school on campus, but they're not in school right now. So he is up there every day. And they've got Guillory coming on an official this weekend. Then it's the dead period. And the staff's playing it right because, look, Alabama had Jacoby and Guillory in their camp. They said, whoa, you look great. We want you to come right on an official. And he did last weekend. Dennis Johnson lines it right up. Now he's coming on as LSU official. Then it's dead period. And, and Jacoby and Guillory said he might commit this summer before his senior year. So they're not leaving any stone unturned. And, uh, and boy, look, they had the number one athlete in the country, Darnell Washington, a five-star on campus yesterday, who John DeCoster had fly out from Nevada just to hang out on an unofficial. And then he's wow. going right back home. So the effort they're putting in on the recruiting trail, not only making the evals, but actually turning that around, getting out there, hitting the road in spring, and then making sure these guys visit. It, um, we talk about Ed Orgeron being sort of recruiting first, right? Like that was his bread and butter, um, even coming into the head coaching situation. And I think right now we're seeing that fire lit under him and this staff, and uh, they're hitting on a cliff that I haven't seen. And I can never – and look, a lot of it probably has to do guys with now they have to overdrive it because of two signing periods and kids can take official visits in the spring. This is only the second year you can do that, but they figured it out and they've got kids there every day. And because of it, we're looking at them sit there battle blow for blow with Bam and Clemson. Not right now, but literally from the start of this class, it has been those three and nobody else. Yeah. Shay Dixon, a go two four seven joining us here off the bench, breaking news. Jalen Lee commits to LSU football, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans and Alexandria. Um, tell me about Eric Alex- Eric Taylor, who just committed out of Alabama as, as LSU goes into Birmingham and gets a four-star defensive defensive lineman. Yeah, that was a big one last night. I mean, Eric Taylor is a kid who has really legit size. I mean, I bet he is all of 6'5", in that 275, 280 range. Um, and again, a kid who we have him ranked as the top 25 defensive tackle in the 3-4. He can probably play some for you on the edge. Uh, Orgeron is interesting. Patrick Jenkins talked about it as playing a little more for down linemen and slides some of these guys inside. So I think they're taking a lot of kids who are a bit versatile. A lot of the guys they're targeting are about 6'4", 280, 6'5", 280. And, and I think that uh, that's a good approach, right? That gives you some guys who can do some different things for you. But Taylor was one where Bama, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, everybody had offered him. But LSU had just quietly made him a priority in terms of -of out-of-state guys, right? Like, we knew they were after Jalen Lee and Roy and Guillory, and and Jenkins came to camp and earned his offer. But Taylor was one guy out of state that Dennis Johnson and his staff seemed to circle pretty early on, and he would pop up at LSU and pop up at LSU and pop up at LSU. And he finally came and did his official visit this past weekend with his mom. And uh, He said after that very quickly, look, I know where I want to go. Uh, and all of these kids have been told, look, we're taking a big D-line haul. Here's the guys we want. Here's how all of y'all would fit in. 
and we're still seeing the dominoes drop. So I don't think anybody's been turned away by that. Um, and again, look, had he gone to Bama's camp, I think that this would have been a kid that Bama was pressing hard. But he used that weekend to come to LSU on an official and shut it down and isn't doing anything this weekend. So LSU is moving into this dead period. We're only, gosh, less than a week away from it. Um, feeling really good uh, sort of about where things are trending. And to go back-to-back with Eric Taylor and Jalen Lee in the matter of you know, go to bed at 10 and you get a commit and wake up at 7 and another hold that tiger, the people out there have been complaining, and maybe rightfully so, right? Like, hey, look, all these guys are about to graduate. You need to restock the D-line. Yes. Uh, they are doing it. There is no reason this morning for anybody uh, to not trust what Ed Orgeron and them have going on. Thanks for waking up with us, man.